Yes, my friends, that is me playing Dante's Inferno PlayStation 3 version on my own homemade console. It is running emulation, but it's running computer parts. And to get this whole project kicked off, you would obviously need a small form factor case. This is an ITX case from Hunky. It's the H702. It's perfect for what I'm going to use it. Just a heads up, if you buy something like this, you cannot use a dedicated graphics card. Everything needs to be integrated. It's quite small. And as you can see at the back, there's literally only space for the motherboard. And then on the side there, they've got a plug-in for the power supply. Opening it up is quite straightforward. You just unscrew it and take the lid off. That unveils the power supply or rather a power distribution unit on the inside. It has all the cables that you may need for a little ITX build. One thing to mention is that it only has a 20 pin connector for the motherboard, which should be fine. It's got four pin for the CPU. It's got a SATA for a uh, SSD and there's the 20 pin instead of 24 pin. I've tested it. It works. You can just plug it into the motherboard. It looks strange because it looks like there's some plugs missing, but it does actually work. So you don't have to worry about that. Then moving on to our components, I opted for the Intel 8500T. This is a Coffee Lake CPU. It's got very low TDP wattage of 35 watts, and that is super important. I've also went for the Gigabyte H310M2 little ITX motherboard with two four gig sticks of memory. As you can see, this board is basically smaller than my hand. Installing it was super straightforward. The board slipped in. It actually looked massive in the case because it really fills up the space. And there we go. You just connect all your cables and you are off to the races. Very straightforward. Now the power supply on the inside is interesting because you do get this little adapter with it. It can basically run about 60 watt. It looks like a little uh, laptop charger with a normal kettle plug on the input, which is quite cool because, you know, kettle plugs are found basically anyway these days. So it's 12 volt, 5 amps and 60 watt power. Now moving on to software, we are going to be using RPCS3, which is a PlayStation 3 emulation software. It works quite well. It gets updated frequently. I highly recommend going for the recommended requirements as a minimum. The emulation is quite system intensive and you will struggle if you go for, let's say, the minimum system requirements. And I highly recommend the Vulkan API or to get a GPU that supports Vulkan API. Six core CPU on the Intel side from Haswell and up. And then on the Ryzen side of things, you would need a eight core Ryzen CPU and better. And to be honest, that is really what you need to aim for if you're going to be building a system like this or if you're going to use your current system. Opening up the software is quite straightforward. You will see once you've loaded games that it will say in-game for games that are partially supported and that have bugs that let's say you can't finish the game, which is quite annoying. So that will have a little orange in-game symbol. And to be honest, I would rather just stay away from games like that. I would stick to the playable games. You can find this on the site as well under compatibility. So looking at some configuration options, you've got global configuration or your own customized configuration. I would stick to the global configuration. They do update it quite frequently and it seems to me to be the best settings. But if you wanted to change it, you can come and play around in these settings here. I would stick to Vulkan and 720p seems to be the main resolution for any of these games. 1080p will probably just cause performance issues. So I would stick to 720p, unfortunately, but that's OK. PlayStation 3 games are not exactly the latest and greatest, so that should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and boot this on the global configuration settings. Now, if you're running this game or any other game for the first time, it will take quite a little bit of time to start up for the first time. You'll see it will load these SPU cache things. First time takes a bit longer. And then once you've loaded it once or twice, it, it actually becomes faster and faster. I am running an SSD, only a 60 gig SSD. So if you wanted more games 
on your emulation, you would have to go for a bigger hard drive. I would recommend sticking to an SSD. It just makes the whole process a little bit faster. And there we go. It is running once again. You can see the frames per second on the left corner there. And it will show you your API, which currently for me is Vulkan. So that's fantastic. There we go. Home screen. Before we carry on with this, I just wanted to open up Task Manager so we can check the performance of what it's actually doing to our CPU and memory and GPU and so on. And <laughs> there we have it. As you can see, this thing is an absolute beast. It's ramping up the CPU to 100% usage basically all the time. The memory seems to be okay, but that CPU is just hitting about three gigahertz, all six cores running 100% utilization which is crazy if you think about it, like what PC game will drive a, a CPU to this extent. Um, again, remember PlayStation 3 games are not recent, but that's the cost of emulation, I suppose. And then memory is sitting at about four gig, 4.5 gig or so, which is not too bad. You can get away with four gig, I suppose. And then the onboard GPU is uh, sitting at a hundred percent utilization. So yeah, that is uh, a little bit uh, worrying, but I suppose you would rather let the system use all the resources available instead of just chilling and going overkill with your, with your build. So yeah, there we go. This is just the intro to the game. I'm going to skip a little bit ahead so we can see some gameplay. I must say, the whole experience is very, very smooth. I have the controller that is vibrating in my hand because of the dual shock that enables and it must get that signal from the emulation, which is great. So every time one of these flaming rocks or boulders or whatever hit the ground, I can feel it. I can feel the impact, which is great. Uh, yeah, I'm super keen and super excited about this game. Uh, never played it before, so this would be my opportunity to play it. I'm not sure if there's a PC port for it, but it's great to know that I can play some PlayStation 3 games on my computer using some emulation. And I took it a step further and I built a dedicated machine to run these emulations. So I'm quite excited. I can't wait to play this game even more. It's going to be great. This project was definitely a success. And I recommend giving it a try. If you have some spare hardware lying around or you want to pick up some cheap Ryzen CPUs, maybe generation one or so, or yeah, any CPU. I got this for quite cheap as a complete build. So quite stoked and happy. This is something I can take with me wherever I go. There you have it. The PC turned PlayStation 3 by the help of emulation. And yes, it can run in full screen and audio does work brilliantly. So give it a try. And if you've liked this video, hit the like button, subscribe so you don't miss any of the future videos, and I will see you guys next time. Yes, I know that is an Xbox controller, grew up with PlayStation, I know exactly where all the buttons go. Cheers guys, see you next time.